Sunny sailing was about freedom. It was freedom of everything. It was leaving everything behind. My father died when I was 10. My parents instilled in me a sense of determination. So when I heard about the Whitbread Around the World race, it was just something I had to do. Sailing at that time was very male-dominated. There were just no women anywhere in it. The Whitbread Round the World race at 33,000 miles is the longest and most challenging on Earth. I wanted to be part of this. I remember going to the skipper, and he went, we're not going to be the only racing team in the world with a girl. And that's when I made the decision to put an all-female crew into the race. I didn't want a real job. I wanted adventure. And I just thought that would be fantastic. I was going to do everything I could to do it. We didn't really take it seriously. There was nothing to show that they would be acknowledged for anything other than failure. I was so full of doubt and fear. All I was thinking was, am I the right person to do this? The Whitbread race is underway. We weren't naive. We knew it was going to be hard. We didn't think they would even finish the first leg. It was something that we were told we couldn't do, but we were doing it anyway. This is the first time in my life I had stood up for something I believed in. And the harder it became, the more I wanted to do it. I first met Tracy and, and heard her tell her story when my daughter was leaving elementary school um, and the school had invited along a, a guest speaker to talk to the children um, and the grown-ups are there to sort of provide the backdrop and some applause. But we were as rapt as these 11-year-olds as Tracy started to tell her story and the more she told of it, the more I thought this is just an incredible film. Um, but I, thinking about it as, as I was listening, thought, this all happened a long time ago, a lot of it happens at sea. I met what I was imagining was a, 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 like a dramatic film with actresses reenacting all of this stuff. Uh, um, uh, and it wasn't until much later that, uh, that Tracy said to me, oh, well, yes, we did have two cameras on board the whole way around and filmed everything. And that's when the possibility of a documentary raised its head. And, and my first love is documentary, so I was over the moon. <laughs> well, this took place between 1989 and 1990. The video cameras were not as compact <laughs> as they are uh, now. No. Can you talk to me when you guys would decide to actually lug this thing out and take video on yeah. this, you know, shaky boat that's on the sea? Yeah, well, Jo, um, I mean, the camera was nearly as big as Jo. <laughs> She's not known for her height. Um, but Jo, uh, as the cook, um, didn't do a watch, I didn't do a watch, the navigator, and she threw herself into this project. Um, we sent her off on a course, you know, go and do a course, four days, camera work, you know, um, I know. Um, then she came back with the camera, and we did we did work with a, a company, a film company, who were fantastic, and taught us about, you know, salt, that water damage, and damp, and, you know, sort of all of these other things. Yeah, I think we were training uh, one day, and, and it was all hands on deck, and Joe came up with the camera, I went, you can put that down right now, get up on deck. So she put the camera down, and then, she said to me, we're going to miss loads of stuff if, you know, because she has to, we have to have all hands on deck sometimes. So that was when we fixed a, a camera up onto the uh, radar mast. Uh, and we were the only boat that, that had one. So we had two cameras. Um, and what do you call, what did you call it, the emergency button? <laughs> yeah, so the, the panic button. So panic button. Um, right. if, if it was all hands on deck, last person out of the boat, your job is to hit the button which starts the, the, the footage rolling. I want to know what your experience was like watching this film for the very first time. It was very weird watching it for the first time. Uh, we all watched it together, the original crew, and uh, we sat in BAFTA in June last year. And um, Alex was very nervous. And <laughs> <laughs> we trusted Alex, so that was really important. I think we all watched it and went, that's not me. That's, that's not me. Was I like that? And we were all going, yes, yes, you were like that. Yeah, you, and you're still like that now. <laughs> For me, it was weird to watch how organised we were because I don't remember it like that. I remember it being, uh, you sort of like, oh, let's do this. Oh, that hasn't worked. Oh, let's try that. You know, and there's sort of this one nightmare to another. But I think we were a lot more accomplished than I, than I remembered. <laughs> It was the most extreme, debilitating temperatures you've ever lived in. Minus 20 with the wind chill. That is really hard. how hard
hard it was. And Alex really, I think, drew that out so beautifully. Um, and all of us said, can you believe it was that hard? And, you know, and, and why did we keep going? I mean, none of us know why we kept going, but that was extraordinary for me. Well, this was a beautiful story, and thank you for sharing it. How many times were told we couldn't do it? You're not strong enough. You're not skilled enough. You'll all die. It was brilliant. Just completely overwhelming. <laughs> what if I tell you about a young girl who had a dream about sailing around the world? What if I tell you that it did happen?